Yeah, my name is Fred Hardy. You know, I live in uh, Tweedsmuir Road, Tremorfa. I've been, uh, uh, I went to Tremorfa early in 19, late 49 as a gents hairdresser. And then uh, I finished hairdressing, I went on a, another job. And um, I took it with cancer when I lived with my daughter out at Castleton. And I had a bowel cancer. So I was afraid of, uh, uh, couldn't travel eight miles from Cardiff, eight miles from Newport type of thing. So I wanted to get back to uh, my roots. So I bought a house next door to my old shop in Trimorfa. And I've been there now about nearly 20 years. I, uh, my, and my wife and I, because I lost my wife on Farsi last year. Um, but in the meantime, uh, in, in, in the 60s, I was into, very interested in the Labour Party, very, very interested. Um, I was a councillor for this ward. I got all the details, it's in my car. I, I'm very fortunate. I had the highest majority ever in this ward. But it will never happen again because the houses that were here then have all been demolished, which is from Many Law Street down the bottom of the plot to, to Milford Street, which is about 17 streets, all demolished in, in the 60s, uh, late 60s. And uh, so, as I say, I went to Tremorfa. Um, I, only, uh, I went on the council, uh, it was a by election. The, the old gent was a councillor before died, and uh, I, I say I was a hairdresser, and I went in on a by election in the November, but I was a one-man a one man hairdressing shop, and I had a child, and I found, I did stick for, for, for the early year to run, which I ran the other, but I didn't seek re-election because it, my shop was falling apart because of the being away council meetings. And I enjoyed it, but in those days, there was no renomination. Re it was all voluntary, which I enjoyed it. And a couple of the stories, one story was that, uh, a young, a young, uh, a young lady came to see me from. A, I, I won't mention the name because obviously, from Moran Road, uh, her husband was having a bit of a nervous breakdown. She had two lovely little children in uh, in uh, in a high school in Cardiff, and her husband uh, broke into the electric meter, and uh, she came to see me. She was in desperate situation, and in those days, my wife used to have five pound a week wages uh, in the in the fifties, early fifties. And, uh, well, no, of course, this was a six around the council, uh, and it was only about five pound a week even then. And uh, so what I did, I gave her my wife's money. I said, go down the, the bank, is shut down now in, in Sprout Road. And I said, get five, five shilling pieces up and put in your meter, just close the lock up, but when he comes, say the lock broke or something. So I give the wife, they had my wife's weekly wage, so my wife had to wait for her wages. And uh, another story I thought was very funny, an old couple lived in Bridgend Street. They were in a dilapidated house there, and housing them was a big problem, more so than, more so than today, I would think. People living within in-laws in houses, middle rooms, front rooms and all. And this old couple lived in Bridgend Street, and the passage was all upside down. And So I got him, I went to see the housing manager, and he was very, 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 very kind, very helpful. And of course, there was a big waiting list on point system, but uh, they had to wait for a while. Anyway, in the end, we managed to get him a house in, uh, in Llan Rumney. And this is the funny part. So we got him a house in Llan Rumney. She was pleased. Three weeks later, I received a letter. Dear Councillor Harry, thank you very much for getting us in a house in Llan Rumney. But we hate it here. We don't like it. Could you get us please back to Splot? No. <laughs> I, I had to say back, I'm very sorry. You know, you, you had a house and there's, a, there's hundreds waiting. Uh, but they wanted to come back to Splot after three weeks in Clan Romney. And uh, two, two old sisters, they were lovely old people. But uh, that was another story. And of course, very often I was knocked up in the middle of the night with domestic problems. And I remember going to a police station, bailing a man out because his wife was expecting a baby. He was, he was uh, arrested for stealing steel from the steelworks in his wagon. And he, he was held, being held in custody. And his wife was expecting a baby. And she came to see me. and. Um, she said he won't him, they won't give him bail. So I said, well, where, where's he? She said, he's in, he's in Janet Street, which was a police station. It's closed down now, of course. So I went up, went up to Janet Street and I saw the police sergeant. I said, his wife's expecting a baby. I said, and uh, I, I'd like to for him to be released. Oh, he said, impossible. I said, well, look, I said, she's expecting to be any minute. So I said, I, I want to insist on that. No, he said, no. Oh, I said, I'll go and see the chief constable. 
So I, did, I didn't tell him who I was, you see. I, I didn't know, I don't like using the phrase, you know. So I said, well, look, he said, he said, I said, I'll go to the chief constable. He said, you can't, he's in the city hall. I said, I know he is, I said, and I'm a councillor. I said, I'll go in the city hall and see the, see the chief constable to get him home. I said, it's, it's an emergency job. Anyway, they let him home, they let him home on bail. But uh, you have to, only, I think the only time I used my little bit of authority, you know. I tried to get around another way, because I knew the chap from years ago and it was hairdressed, and of course, and I knew him well. And I, I knew he wasn't going to abscond because obviously he had, he had three kids and switched back in the fourth. So there's another story that happened in uh, there were so many little stories really, we forgot most of them now. I remember once uh, Jim Callan, I got a photograph in the, my car of him in, in the Ocean Club in Cardiff here, which I, I'll show you later. Um, he had a, he had a, a set by the name of Ruth Sharp, she was a nice lady mm -hmm. as you say, and we compared notes, Ruth Sharp and I, and she was a paid secretary to the, the MP, mind you, he wasn't a teacher prime minister, he was an M M MP of Cardiff South East. And I had more interviews with people in a year than she had in a year. And I was only part-time, voluntary, if you like. And she was a paid secretary. She said, you, you had, you'd done more interviews than I did in a year. But she was a nice lady, you know. And I liked Jim Callum, he was a nice... Of course, he kept, later on he became prime minister and all that, you know. Yeah. I got a photograph in the car of him and Dennis Healy in when even he, you're probably too young for this. There'd be a nice club in Top of Tree Moff, they call the Ocean Club. It was beautiful it was. Like like the, there was a one in Dutton Piffley called Double Diamond and there was one in Tree Moff, it was a lovely club. But like all other clubs it's vanished. But uh, we had a Labour Party do there, there was Dennis Healy, Barbara Castle, Jim Callahan. And I got a photograph in it. And I've also got a, a copy of uh, I think the original when I took the oath in nineteen sixty three at the council. So I, I got my car, and what else have I got in it? Only two or three things. When I got a photograph of my brother and I, he was killed in 1951, on the top of the old Splot Baths, where the, where the, the new uh, hub is now, there was an open, open air swimming bath then, and they had, they had a balcony on the top. And it's a really small little photograph, but I reckon that was just after the war. So that's probably 70 years ago. It's in my car, so if there's any questions you'd like to ask, you know, it was an interesting time, I enjoyed it, but it, it, unfortunately being self-employed it was almost impossible, you know, because yeah. I said, in, I think if you spent a half day, you'd have 10 shillings, and if you had a full day, you'd have 32 shillings, and you had to prove, you had to say that you're losing this income, you know, you had to sign for it, it's like, like it was a voucher. <laughs> Now it's on what, six, eight thousand a year, ten thousand, twelve thousand to be the, be the chairman or chairwoman. <laughs> so I don't know if you've got any questions, love, I'd be pleased to. What motivated you to volunteer? I don't know. My father was a, I'm not religious, but my father was very religious and he was always interested in the community. My father was a Methodist local preacher, what they call a voluntary uh, preacher, you know, not, not like a, a reverend. And he was acted all his life and he was always interested in the community. and I. And my uncle's, my one uncle, uh, Mr. Bowley, uh, he was well known as Splot. He started the first camp for young people before the war, for poor people in Porth Call, in Nottage, in Porth Call. In later years, the city council took it over with the, with the built place, but he used to go under with tents. And he'd, he'd take all people, if we were poor, and we were all poor, and of course, everybody was poor, to marry we were Catholic, Protestants, if you were poor, you could go to Porthcar for a week or so, to, to Nottage, and uh, he, was, he, was, he was in the honours list, and his son was quite the same, uh, given a work for youth, both of them worked for youth, you know. That was my, my mother's relations, there with a book called The Bowleys, very well known as Splot, very well known in, in the church and, uh, and, and voluntary things. Mm. I'm not sure if you've got time. Yeah. Any I think we better so, let yeah. you get back yeah. to your food. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing else you want to know, love, really. It's, it's, it's interesting time. Oh, yeah. yeah, I never regretted yeah. it. Yeah. Although my shop went down a little bit, I had a, a second thought about the business, but still, for all that, I enjoyed it. <laughs> Good, enjoyed that's it. the main yeah, thing, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 I shall have lots of letters thanking me, you know. Yeah. You know, lots of letters. Yeah. yeah. But they're all gone on now, I think. Well. <laughs>